to thank you for joining us in this new program series entitled Alone with God. We're here with the author of this book entitled Alone with God with Francis Cardinal Arenzi, president of the Pontifical Council for Interreligious Dialogue. His eminence also was a leader in Nigeria, and I believe Nigeria experienced a tremendous awakening and re-evangel or evangelization experience, literally drawing millions to the Lord. Your eminence, we want to thank you for joining us. Thank you. And uh, we want to thank you for writing this book. I read this book after, when, actually when I was returning from Rome, and uh, I took it back and forth with me, and I, I never read a book that has presented the faith in, in a more profound way, but still a way that everyone can understand it. And maybe you can just give me an idea of why, why you wrote this book. The book is uh, a result of many talks I gave over a period of years, about 20 years, from 1966 to 1986. Mm -hmm. They were principally talks given to people during retreats. The retreats were in part for priests. Some of them were for religious brothers, mm -hmm. a few religious sisters, many, and for lay people, groups. Mm -hmm. Then as the time passed, each time of course I, I enriched the talks. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning of the 80s, the Religious Brothers of St. Stephen is a congregation of brothers that I founded in Onicha in Nigeria mm -hmm. about 16 years ago. Mm -hmm. They asked me, please put it in book form, give it to us. Eventually, I got around to doing that. Mm -hmm. But in doing it then, I had to uh, retouch it a bit and cut out many things that would suit special groups so that it would do for all groups. Right. That's why the title, Alone with God, I meant it as a reflection manual for a person who might want to do a retreat mm -hmm. alone or even just a reflection on many of the aspects of our faith. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, your eminence in uh, just your own background, maybe you can just uh, describe your experience in Nigeria and maybe also what you're doing in the, in the Roman Curia, a little background so our people understand your... Yeah, in Nigeria, uh, well, I was trained in the seminary, what we call junior seminary for children between age 11 to 18. 18, from 1947 mm -hmm. to 52. So 11 years old you started? In yeah, about that, 11, 12. Then I was teaching for, well, after, that's part of it. Mm -hmm. Then I did philosophy in Nigeria for three years, 1953 to 55. Mm -hmm. Then theology in Rome in the Urban University mm -hmm. and living in the college for mission students from many countries. We were from about 40 countries. Mm -hmm. Ordained priest then in 1958 in Rome. Mm -hmm. I finished my studies in Rome in 1960. Back home, I was teaching in the seminary, major seminary, for two years, 1961 to 62. Mm -hmm. Then I was secretary to the bishops of the eastern part of Nigeria for educational matters and relations with government for three years, 62 to 65, within which I did a year in London, Institute of Education. I see. And then I was made a, um, assistant bishop, auxiliary bishop in Onicha, 1965, the last year of Vatican II, the mm -hmm. Vatican Council. So I was able to take part in the last session. Oh, I was right. made bishop mm -hmm. just two weeks before the last session. Really? Uh -huh. So I took part That's September great. to December 1965. Mm -hmm. In 1967, I was made Archbishop of Furniture. Mm -hmm. That time I was 34 years old. 34 years uh, old. But I've improved <laughs> since then. <laughs> I see. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, in short, I was Archbishop of Niger uh, Furniture in Nigeria then from 1967 until 1984, mm -hmm. when the Holy Father then called me to Rome to work at this office for interreligious dialogue mm -hmm. of the Catholic Church. Now what is that interreligious dialogue? What would that mean? What it means is the Catholic Church wants to meet all other believers in the world who are not Christians. Mm -hmm. 
there is a separate department in the Vatican for dialogue with other Christians with a view to reunion. Mm -hmm. We call that uh, ecumenism. Right. Uh -huh. That means contact with the Orthodox, Episcopalian, Anglican, Methodist, Baptist, and so on. Mm -hmm. That's different. Where I work is contact with the Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, Sikhs, Zoroastrians, followers of traditional religions, Shintoists, Taoists, any religion. Mm -hmm. Anywhere in the world. You including the American Indians you were oh, yes. talking about that, right? Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Including the American Indians. The reason is this. <clears throat> the Catholic Church, in the name of Christ, wants to meet every human being. Mm -hmm. If the other believers want to become Christians, obviously we are very happy. Right. Indeed, we would want everyone in the world to become a Catholic, mm -hmm. without exception. Right. But religion is proposed not imposed. We do not get conversions by force or tricks mm -hmm. or pressure. And any conversion got in that way would not be what, worthy of the human person. Mm -hmm. Suppose a Muslim or a Buddhist or a Hindu says, I do not want to become a Christian. Should we, as Catholics say, in that case we are not interested in you. We dare not say that. Right. In the name of Christ, this is a human being. In the name of Christ, the Catholic Church must meet that human being. As Pope John Paul II put it, mm -hmm. the Church looks on the face of every human being and sees Christ. Whether that person realizes that Christ is his or her Savior or not. So that Christ died on the cross, not just for Catholics, not just for Christians. He died for every human being. So that it is part of the mission of the church to meet every human being. The Catholic Church never writes off any human being. Mm -hmm. So the Catholic Church wants to meet other believers, even if they do not want to become Christians, right. to listen to them, to try to understand them, and we hope also they will listen to us and try to understand us because dialogue is a two-way traffic. Mm -hmm. And then we see what we can do together. Divine Providence can use such initiatives as he wishes. God can give his grace as he wishes, to whom he wishes, where, when, how. We leave it to him. We try then to cooperate with other believers in so far as that is possible, or at least to reduce prejudices. Mm -hmm. There are so many barriers yes. made by human beings along the corridors of history. Mm -hmm. Interreligious dialogue helps to reduce such barriers, to make the name of Christ heard among followers of other religions who would otherwise mm -hmm. not hear him. It helps us Christians to shed some of our prejudices against our fellow human beings in other religions. It does not mean that the Catholic Church is looking for a lowest common denominator religion, or that we are saying that one religion is as good as another. If we said that, we wouldn't be Christians anymore. Mm -hmm. We would just be philosophical acrobats. Right. Uh, but we are not that. 